In the previous videos, we could watch how to make the woodworking templates out of the Adirondack chair plans, and how to use those plans to route all the pieces we need to make this chair. You already know that you can find the link to those plans in my woodworking blog. So in this video we'll see how to put together all the pieces of this Adirondack garden chair. Then I have clamped this straight plank to the workbench, and it is on a couple of templates, just to lift it a bit. First I measure 11.5 cm in the front of the side supports, and I make a mark in the bottom edge. I put that piece against the clamped plank, and I put the side support on it. So now I can put the front leg here under the side support. Then this edge must rest perfectly against the clamped plank, and this edge in the front leg must be exactly in the mark I made, and the front leg must be at 90 degrees with the clamped plank. So here I have 11.5 centimeters, and here I have about 19 centimeters. Making sure I don't move anything, I drill four guide holes. I will only use stainless steel screws. So this is the first side of the Adirondack chair. Now I will make the other side, but notice that this one looks to the other side. Like this both sides will be symmetrical. And you should also notice that I begin to drill in the side support, not in the front leg. This is the lower back support. I put that end in that notch and I insert one screw. I put the other end in the other notch and I insert one screw. I make sure everything is at 90 degrees and I insert another screw in each end. Now I have clamped this strip on the workbench. I put the front legs against the strip and I put the back legs here. So now I can put the upper back support. I make sure the edge is flush with the edge of the back legs. I center it. And I screw it. Now here we can see that there are two corners that protrude out of the upper back support curvature. So I mark them and I'll cut them later. Then this goes here like this. And the edge of this piece must be aligned with the edge of this piece. So I move the back legs until this back slat rests well on the edge of both the upper back support and the lower back support. Of course, in such a way that the back legs are perfectly vertical. I clamp the back legs. I make sure they are vertical yet. I measure, just to make sure both legs are in the same position. And I insert four screws in each leg. And now I can cut those small corners. Next, I center the armrest supports in the front legs, and I screw them. I would use the support blocks to screw the armrest, but instead of using those support blocks, I will insert some screws like this. Then first I will drill a hole with the same diameter as the screw's head diameter. But I will only drill half the way. Then 
And now I drill the guide holes inside those bigger holes. So the screws go like this. I just must make sure they don't protrude more than the thick of the armrest. Now this is the front legs template. And I put it here to level the armrest. I move the armrest until the back is flush with the back leg and I insert a couple of screws. Now it is time to set the front of the armrest. This piece is the same thick as this. I put it here and I align the edge of the armrest with it. And now I can insert the screws. Before installing the armrest back supports, I will cut them at 45 degrees. Notice that I cut this one to be symmetrical with the first one. Not identical. And I install them under the back of each armrest. I insert the screws at an angle. And I must make sure the tip of the screws won't protrude the other side. Now this back slat goes in one side. And I want this edge to be exactly in the end of the curve of both the upper and the lower back supports. Like this. And I want the end to be a couple of centimeters below the lower back support. I drill a guide hole against the upper support and I insert one screw. I set the position in the lower support and I insert another screw. Now I measure how much the slat protrudes the upper back support. Like this I make sure I put the slat of the other side in the same position. Now I nail that small slat under the back slats. Like this it will help to put the other back slats to the right height. Now this piece will be useful to make sure I have always the same distance between two slats. So I use it to screw them in the right position. I make sure the lower part of the back slats are equally spaced and I screw them. And now I can remove this slat. Now the first seat slat bumps here and here and there is a big gap behind it. So I decided to use the jigsaw to cut a couple of notches. And in the other side we can see I cut at an angle. Like this it will fit better with the back slats. I put the other seat slats. I make sure the last one is in the right position and I screw it. Now I have to make sure the slats are equally spaced. The best spacers I could found are the screws I will use. Well, not in the front. There I use some washers. In my last video we could see how to route the flat surfaces in the front of the side supports so the seat slats rest perfectly. Then once all the seat slats are in the right place, I drill a couple of guide holes in each end of each slat and I drive the screws.
And now I can remove the spacer. Now I use a pen to number all the seat slots and the back slots. Like this, when I dismantle the chair and I assemble it once again, I'll know where to put each slot. And I round the corners all around each armrest, except the part I screw against the back legs. I also round the corners in the armrest supports. And finally I round the outside corners in all the seat and the back slots. Now I use a countersink drill bit to countersink the guide holes. But I must pay attention so I only countersink the holes where the screw's head will rest. Now I can sand all the pieces I apply a couple of layers of wood protector And I can assemble the Adirondack chair once again. And here we can see the Adirondack chair. It is both very comfortable and very nice. And despite it takes a lot of effort to make this wooden chair, it is worth the effort. Thanks for watching. If you like this chair, don't forget to click like and share. And if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe to my woodworking channel. Also remember that you can find my projects in my woodworking blog, link in the description.